We're faced with choices every day, and guess what? There's something behind the decisions we make. My next guest says it's social influence, and it can affect anything from products we buy to our investment decisions, and even saving for retirement. Joining me now is Jonah Berger, author of the new book, Invisible Influence. Jonah, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thanks so much for having me. So your new book examines why people make decisions, what's behind the decisions they make. You call it social influence. What do you mean by that? Yeah, we think we make our own decisions, and very simply, we're wrong. Uh, actually, other people often make our decisions for us, and it's not necessarily advertisers or some hidden uh, persuader necessarily, but it's our friends, our colleagues, the people we surround ourselves with. Everything from simple facts, like uh, if we're running at the gym and we're on a treadmill and someone's next to us, they might make us run faster, or someone on the subway is wearing a certain shirt and we buy something similar. And so even people we don't know can have a surprising and often subtle effect on our behavior. And how does that behavior, how does that uh play off in the work environment? How does that affect the decisions we make in the workplace? Yeah, so we've all been in, in uh, workplace decisions, group decisions, mm -hmm. we're all thinking about what to do where others help, but there are also situations where others hurt. And so part of the book is understanding how do others affect our behavior and mm -hmm. how can we take advantage of the upsides and uh, avoid the downsides. Group think, for example, when you make mm -hmm. decisions in groups, we often go the wrong way because we have a tendency to follow others. And so how can we avoid that and use social influence to help us? So what's some of the advice that you would give people to actually help the social influence better make the decisions in the workplace? Yeah, so great example. We're all sitting around trying to decide who to hire mm -hmm. or whether to go with one certain uh, supplier or another one. Often someone speaks first, and the next person may not always agree with what the first person said, but they feel a pressure to kind of go along, mm -hmm. right? It's like if you're at a group dinner and you were thinking about getting dessert, but no one else wants dessert, you decide not to get dessert. Yeah. Same thing, if someone says right, and you were thinking left, but it looks like a few other people are thinking right, you might go along with the group. And so the problem is everyone goes along one way when they actually have valuable information. Mm -hmm. We've all heard of the wisdom of crowds, but crowds are only wise if we get our independent decisions out there. And so I often suggest setting up a designated dissenter, a person in the group whose job is to actually disagree what everyone else is saying. So someone says we should hire this person, this is why, we'll poke holes in that argument. Uh, not only will that help that person uh, show what, what might be better ways to go, but it'll free up everyone else to share their own unique viewpoints. And based on what you've learned about social influence, is there any advice that you would give the actual employers, the companies that are employing these different types of employees? Certainly, so uh, one chapter in the book is all about motivation. How do we motivate people to, to work harder? And we've all had that challenge in, an, in a workplace environment. You know, how do we get people to stay after, put in more hours, or you know, put in a little more effort to, to get a particularly good project? Peers are a powerful tool to do that. Now, often we turn to money, we say, oh, I'll pay you extra, or you know, the best performer wins. But if we can compare people to others that are just a little bit better than them, that's actually a, a powerful way to motivate them. We looked at NBA basketball games, uh, for example, and found that teams that are just a little bit behind at halftime are actually more likely to win. The fact that they're just behind but just close makes them feel like, I can get there, I can make it. And so in a workplace context, how can we compare employees to others in the office that are doing just a little bit better to motivate them to work harder as well? Well, Jonah Berger, thank you so much. A lot of interesting advice for employers and also employees. Thank you for being here today. Well, thanks for having me. And now it's your turn. Do you think social influence is a factor in decisions you make? Why or why not? Let us know what you think in the space below or on the Yahoo Finance Facebook page.